What's up everyone, welcome back. This is DHTV and today we're gonna to take a side-by-side -side comparison of iOS 7.1 versus iOS 7.0.6. I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the changes so you can see if it's worth updating or if you should wait. Let's get started. Just a disclaimer, if any of you have a jailbroken iOS device, I would strongly recommend that you don't update to iOS 7.1 because it's not supported. So that means you're gonna lose your jailbreak and there isn't currently a jailbreak for iOS 7.1. So definitely keep that in mind if you wanna keep your jailbreak. All right, so to kick things off, let's take a quick look at some of the zooming changes. So you'll notice that when we open and close applications, traditionally they're at this speed, whereas now they're at this speed, it's just a little bit faster. So we'll open them up together, we'll close them together. So you'll notice the zoom speed has increased with iOS 7.1. The next change involves the keyboard. So we'll go ahead and open up the notes application here on both. We'll open up the keyboard. And the first thing you should notice is that with iOS 7.1, the keyboard looks like it's a little bit bolder. It also looks like they've filled in the shift slash caps lock button, the backspace button, as well as the little microphone button. And if we go ahead and tap on that and we tap on the shift key here, you'll also notice it's filled in with a darker color rather than this grayish black color that it was with iOS 7.0.6. The next change is pretty big, and if we open up the phone application here, you'll notice that it's now changed from a rectangular call button to just a green call button. Now this would be the same if you've placed a call. You'll notice that your hang-up button will be a red hang-up circle rather than the rectangle. Also, if you type in someone's phone number and you wanna add them to your contacts, you would have to go down to contacts and add them individually. With iOS 7.1, if you type in someone's phone number and you wanna add them to your contacts, you now have an add contact plus at the top left where you can quickly add the contact to your contact list. The next change is a very small one and has to do with the animation of control center. So if we open both up, you'll notice how iOS 7 sort of bounces when it opens, whereas iOS 7.0.6 sort of goes up nicely. We'll open them up simultaneously so you can see, and you can see that has somewhat of a little bit of a bounce. Next, we'll take a quick look at Safari on both devices here, and you'll notice that at the top, it now says search web or entire site name rather than it saying search or enter an address. So that's a very minor change, but it is a change nonetheless. Now let's take a look at the settings application as there are quite a few changes within it. Now the first thing you're probably gonna notice over here is it's missing a few settings, but just ignore that. That's because this doesn't have a SIM card inserted. What you're actually gonna see with iOS 7.1 is in this section. You'll notice that passcode is now on the main page rather than having to go to general and then scroll down and try to find your touch ID and passcode or your passcode section. The next setting we'll take a look at involves the wallpapers and brightness tab here. Now when you set a new wallpaper with iOS 7.1 the same way you would with iOS 7.0.6, basically it gives you an option to set the perspective zoom. You can turn that on or off. And basically this is gonna address that issue where you're downloading a wallpaper and then when you save it, it zooms it and makes it blurry and it doesn't fit on the screen. Now if you use this setting right here, it should correct that problem. That way you can add your wallpaper and pretty much get them anywhere without having that issue. Now some other setting changes involves the accessibility section here. So we'll open up both of those on both devices and we'll take a look first off at larger text. So we'll open up both of those and you'll notice that now where it used to say larger dynamic type, it's now called larger accessibility sizes. They both do the same thing. They've just changed the name. Also in the accessibility tab, you'll notice we have the increase contrast section here. Well, with iOS 7.1, we've been given a few more settings. Over here, we can only adjust the contrast setting where now we can reduce the transparency, darken the colors and reduce the white point. So let's take a look at each. So starting from the bottom up, we'll turn on the reduce white point and you should notice that it gets darker and lighter as I toggle it on and off. It's basically putting like a skin over the white and sort of darkening it a little bit and then brightening it a little bit. So if you wanna use that, you can. 
The next setting is called Darken Colors, and it apparently darkens the colors of everything. So we'll go ahead and turn that on, and you should notice darker colors. Now, for me, it's very difficult to notice, especially when looking at the camera screen. I can't notice at all. But even with the naked eye, I'm not able to really see much of a difference, if any at all. But it does have that feature. Not sure if it's working or not. And lastly, the reduced transparency feature here, if we go back to the home screen on both, you'll notice now that we've reduced the transparency, you can't see the background sort of through the dock. Same thing goes for folders. So I created two folders here. You can see that you can kind of see through on iOS 7.0.6, Whereas with iOS 7.1, with that feature enabled, you no longer can see through the folders as well. Continuing with the accessibility settings, we have a new tab which is called the button shapes. And if you turn that on, you'll notice a button shape will be around all the tappable buttons. So if we turn it off, it'll remove it. Turning it on, it'll bring it back. This will help you if you're having trouble noticing which ones are tappable buttons. So if we open up an application, let's say the videos application here, we'll go to the store. You'll notice that anything that we can tap either to go back, to cancel, in this case, the genres here, we can tap on that and it'll take us to the genre section. Now cancel is also filled with a button. So this will go through the whole experience with iOS when you have that enabled. Moving to the restrictions section, so if you go to general and down to restrictions, you'll notice there's a new setting called CarPlay, whereas in iOS 7.0.6, if we go into restrictions, we don't have that. And this CarPlay, once it becomes available to the public, will be available and you'll be able to enable it and disable it and add it to your restrictions. The calendar app has also been given a very slight modification here, so we'll open it up on both. And you'll notice we have a new tab here, and it's actually going to bring up a list. So you can now check out what's going on and what's coming up in the months ahead, like special days, appointments, and anything you've set up. The notification center has also been given a very small change. As you can see, we're in the missed section with both. And on iOS 7.1, you see it says no missed notifications. Same thing goes for the all section here. When you tap on it and have nothing there, it'll say no notifications rather than just being blank. Powering down has also gone through a design change. So if we hold to power down our device, you'll notice that the slide to power off tab is now a rounded oval rather than a red rectangle. You also notice the camera cancel button has gone through a change, but also with that, if you slide to power it off, you'll notice that it dims the complete screen, whereas with the old version, it dims the screen but leaves the cancel as well as the red slide to power off feature the same color. Now for a few changes I can't really show you. Siri has also gone through a change. You now have more natural sounding voices. So if you use Australian English, UK English, Japanese or Chinese, they've been given a more natural sounding Siri. With that being said, the music app has also been given a couple of settings which I can't show you. You have a new new button to create new stations and also a new buy album button. Also, if you have an iPhone 5S, you've been given some camera features, which I can't show you as well because I didn't upgrade the iPhone 5S to 7.1, but basically these have to do with the HDR setting. You can basically set it to set the best photo from the HDR photos. You'll have a toggle for that. You also have some other camera settings which you can play around with as well. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment box down below. Also, if you've noticed some changes that I may have missed, let me know in the comments. Feel free to subscribe for more videos like this one. I post them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, all about tech, how-tos, tips, tricks, unboxings, gaming, everything to do with tech and fun. And I try to give you guys as much information as I can in the process. Anyway guys, I will catch you in the next one.